Welcome to 123 from District 123, a podcast that explores and shares the magic happening throughout District 123 schools every day. In each episode, we chat with the people responsible for moving inspired educational ideas from the imagination to the classroom. We dig deeper into those ideas and share the successes from some of the most innovative practices seen throughout Oak Lawn Hometown School District 123. 123 from District 123 has proudly brought to you by the District 123 Ed Foundation. More information about the foundation can be found at d123edfoundation.org. Now here's your host, District 123 Superintendent, Dr. Paul Enderly. Hello world and welcome to 123 from District 123. I am Paul Enderly, the superintendent of Oaklawn Hometown School District 123 and the proud host of the 123 podcast, a podcast that takes a deeper dive into exploring great ideas in the field of education. Uh, this podcast is brought to us today by not only School District 123, but our School District 123 Ed Foundation, uh, which is comprised of just an absolute great group of community people who strive to work in conjunction with the school district strategic plan to acquire and distribute resources to enhance learning opportunities and advance special innovative projects. And we are very excited today to welcome two of our preschool teachers to the 123 podcast, Karen Bajorklin and Sharon Sheehan, who um, are going to share a wonderful idea they had a couple years ago um, and actually an amazing story about an innovative outdoor learning space um, here in District 123 and how that learning space is really engaging some of the youngest learners in District 123. Karen and Sharon, welcome to the podcast. And uh, if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes and sharing a little bit with our audience about yourself. I'm um, Karen Bjorkland. I started in the district probably over 10 years ago. Um, it's a wonderful district to work with. I love working with all young children and I am greatly afforded the opportunity to work with the youngest, the 2.9s. So I work with them two days a week and then the threes come three days a week. And then I have fours in the afternoon. So it's a really nice way to watch the growth and development over time from our 2.9s all the way to our four and five year olds. Sounds like a busy schedule. It is a busy <laughs> schedule. It keeps me hopping and I, you know, have a surprise every single day I come to work. That's great. That's great. Sharon? Uh, I'm Sharon Sheehan and this is my 23rd year in the district. I started in tuition preschool and then I moved up and I did uh, kindergarten and first grade and first grade and reading recovery for 14 years. I've been back in tuition preschool for five years and I love working with Karen and with all of our wonderful children and families. Um, I teach mostly the older children, so I have two classes of four-year-olds. One class attends five days in the morning, and then I have a class that um, attends three days in the afternoons. And the other two days, I have my three-year-olds. And just like Karen said, that it is so exciting to watch their growth over yeah. time. That's probably like one of our greatest joys. Yeah, I know our preschool program is a very, very busy place. And um, when I think of Karen and Sharon, I, I, I think of you guys as our dynamic duo <laughs> because uh, our dynamic preschool duo, because every time I walk into the, the preschool or even go outside and see the kids, it, you know, it's just electric. The, the, the kids are, are excited. They're moving. They're talking. They're singing. They're reading. They're doing math. They're doing science. And there's just a ton of active learning that goes on in our preschool absolutely, program absolutely. And, and it just it's really neat to see that our kids are not only getting those foundational things that they need for kindergarten readiness but really um, a love for learning at such a young age is very important just to associate that love of learning with school i think is really really important and and you guys seem to have a great collaboration can you talk a little bit about that and how you guys collaborate and talk about these great ideas our teamwork. Um, I think Sharon and I are um, kind of silly and I think we feed off of each other because I, even today we went into the classroom and one of the little girls was wearing these sparkly lovely boots and I said, oh, 
do they have a pair for me? Or And Sharon said, I just asked her that. And then we kind of went into a song and dance in front of all the children, and they just looked at us like, this is the norm. Yeah. And, and I think that's our flow and our balance, because we could feed ideas off of each other, sure. and we are going to be accepted of the great ideas or the silly ideas. It's just one of those things that... We, we will accept and try anything. Excellent. You know, I, I find that great collaboration, there, there is a lot of that vulnerability. Yes. You know, that, that educators share that, you know, you can throw out great ideas or silly ideas or brainstorms and not worry about being judged. Right. That you're just right. throwing ideas out and, you know, seeing what sticks. And, you know, I could tell from just being an observer, you know, the many times I've come in, there, there's a lot of, lot of learning that's sticking with our kids. So thank you for, for all you do. But I do want to talk a little bit about this outdoor learning space and this great idea. And our 123 podcast follows that 123 format. So the first thing we'll do is talk about that great one idea and the origin of that idea. The second thing, two possible surprises along the way as you implemented things and then because we do like to be results oriented thinking about those student outcomes and three potential positive student outcomes that you've seen over the past year and a half or so as this idea has grown out so let's talk a little bit about that number one thing that that idea you had could can you guys share a little bit with our listeners where it came from how it grew and uh, that whole journey well, I think it started out small. I think we were, because we do a lot of the field trips and we go to the farm and we go, we went to Kono's and this year we went to the Morton Arboretum. All these outdoor experiences for the children are just so exciting for them. You see them learning, you see them being, you know, leaders and risk takers. And we thought, how can we get that into our, our classroom? And we had the playground, which was great. Yeah. Um, when we made the move, it was a little bit for the older children. It's like, you know, maybe we could have something for us. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wouldn't that be great if we had a garden? How fun would that be? And then everything kind of blossomed from yeah. that. And then we started thinking, what other things can we have? And it just happened to be, we were at a meeting with you at that day. Yeah. It was like, yeah, do you think we could have a farm? It's like, yeah, or a garden. garden. You know, yeah. yeah. I, what is that? Just some great. And then I guess you probably didn't know where our ideas, <laughs> because that's how Sharon and I roll. We start out small, and then all of oh, a yeah. sudden, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I remember being around that table, and I think uh, Candy Kramer, your principal, was there. Um, um, I think a number of our parents as well as yes. part of your parent organization was involved in that initial conversation. And, and you're right, this idea came, I think someone came in with a little something sketched out on a sheet of paper and then it just, you know, blossomed into all these, these wonderful ideas and a, and a really neat learning space for our kids that is just literally right outside your classroom door. Absolutely. I think one of the most exciting things too is that it truly is has been a community project. You know, it started, uh, Mr. Fetchko, our community liaison, was so helpful at the beginning because he runs that community yes. garden. And, you know, he came over and he got the, the village forester involved and she came over and they helped us figure out, you know, what do we need for this garden? You know, what size do we need? Where should it be? You know, he helped us to get our story stumps. And then from there, we we wrote our grant and we were able to get the, the chime wall that the children just love so much. Um, we did our, we turned our fundraiser into um, an opportunity to get the painting wall and the teachers yes. were wonderful. Our staff supported us so much with that. Um, our principal wrote a grant to get part of the musical center. We had people donate wood and, you know, Karen's family was out there staining things. So <laughs> it truly has been a whole yeah. community project. You know, the PSA was involved in, in purchasing things. So it, it's it's just been wonderful to see everybody come together. And I think one of the parents actually built the kitchen. One of um, my friends, oh, friends built the kitchen, okay. and then we kind of added all of Did the okay. cutesy touches yeah. to it and the painting. But yes, yeah. and all of the lumber was donated by Schiller's or Schilling's. Um, and yeah. so, I mean, everything was wonderful. By the time you really think about what we paid for everything, it was very minimal yeah. for the wonderful experience that we provide the children of the district. Yeah, it turned out to be a really inspiring community kind of teamwork you know absolutely, effort in yeah, the absolutely. End. And i just think you know it obviously stemmed from your vision 
of, you know, that, that sheet of paper you right. brought in and, and things just kind of grew from there. But, you know, I know part of our strategic plan is enhancing what's called collective efficacy. And this idea that by working together, we all believe that we make a difference in the lives of our kids and those beliefs, you know, springboard into ideas like this, but it's a great example of that efficacy in action because it, you know, being around that table and seeing what that space is now and walking by the space, I mean, it's, it's, you know, 17 degrees out now, right. but when the weather warms up, it's just really encouraging to, you know, I purposely park in that back lot just to simply walk through and see you guys in action. And uh, could you speak a little bit to the different components? I know we were talking a little bit about the different things in the um, the space itself, but maybe we could speak to a little bit because, you know, the kids come in there and they're all actively involved in different things at different times. So if you could speak a little bit to those different components. All right. You know, um, and that's something that we wanted to talk about because we have so many different types of learners sure. to have something there that um, meets the needs of every single child is very important to us. And we found that we did it. You know, we did it as a community. We did it as, as a thought process. Our parents helped us. Um, the sandbox is for the children that just want to jump in and are ready for, you know, whatever happens Anything, in the yeah. sandbox. Um, the same with the mud pie kitchen. They absolutely love the sensory experience of the mud pie kitchen sure. that we could switch around. And when we come out, that's where we do our science experiments or, or the messy play. Um, we have a little area where they could just run. They could just run, be children, experience that fun. Um, play game. Play games, right? We'll set up something out right. there. Um, the sensory table um, that you know we've got three different containers. We can do water. We've done um, all kinds of measurement experience. We'll right. do like fall sink and float out there. You know that's always an opportunity to get in there yeah. and build some science and math skills in a STEM really end. fun way. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we've got our story area with with a, and a little bench and our story stumps. Um, music area, the painting area. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And it's funny because you don't realize how all the areas are being played with until like Sharon and I do a lot of remind, a lot of videos, a lot sure. of um, pictures. And we'll be working on the videos over the weekend and you'll hear the chime wall in the background. Yeah. So yeah. they're all over the place from our 2.9s. They absolutely love the garden. We would go out there and there's like, we pick the um, vegetables we would pick vegetables. We went in and we made our salsa. It, it's truly a truly a living and growing and ever changing um, environment, learning environment. That's that, that's great. It's it's great to even you know get some of that gardening, get kids connected to that at such an early age. Um, just a, a phenomenal a phenomenal space. Let's move into the second part and let's talk a little bit about those surprises that you know came along the way. Um, those things that as you were implementing, maybe you either anticipated or didn't anticipate along the way. Anything jump up and things think, you could think about? I think for me, one of the things, I don't know if I would call it surprising because we have amazing families and, and they are so involved. So this summer when it, you know we had planted in the spring, but then it was okay, we need to take care of this garden over the summer. So um, one of our parents created a sign up genius and every single slot was taken up. You know, Every single day someone wow. signed up to water and take care of the garden. But I think what was really nice is Karen talked about the Remind app that over the summer, you know, all through the school year, I'm sending pictures to parents, but over the summer, we were getting the pictures of entire families out there enjoying the garden, having picnics, um, uh -oh. you know, telling us about that family time. And they all knew yeah. like, I was super excited. I wanted pumpkins so badly. So when the pumpkin <laughs> started to grow, I was getting all these pictures, Miss Sharon, the pumpkins are growing sure, Look, sure. So, you know, that, like I said, I don't think it was a surprise, but I think it, it was just super exciting to see that it became like a family garden at that point. So the communication efforts that you were making during the school year then right. were reciprocated by our families Absolutely. over the summer over their excitement of exactly. being uh, in the space itself. That is excellent. Yeah. yeah. And it had to be great for you guys to see that sitting at home. Wow. Right. Oh, this yeah. is happening. It was the wow that our plants grew. We were so <laughs> Sharon and I are not really gardeners, but we listened to instructions yeah. and we followed instructions in a crew and it was lovely. Just lovely. Yeah, I know our park district does a nice job with that and they, they give some good guidance mm -hmm. because our community garden, um, the growth of the garden is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. So it's a, it's a good partnership certainly to have. 
any other surprises, but I, that's an awesome one. Anything else you could think of? You know, the one surprise that I guess we don't have data on because it just happened this year, but the transition of all the children coming into our preschool seemed a little bit easier because we oh. had that other layer of a learning facility. Sure. So you're taking all the different types of learners, the quiet learners, the more vibrant ones that are ready to just come yeah. into school and run it. But our our garden, we have like the sand area, the music area, the painting area, but we also have this little quiet bench for the children that just need to be quiet observers sure. before they jump into action. So I think even for myself and, and Sharon, it is just such a natural, beautiful environment that we are just so relaxed and it's a very pleasant environment right. to be in. So I think it really helps the children that have a little bit anxiety sure. to come in into a welcoming place. Yeah. And that's a, that's a concern at the preschool or the early learning level. You know, transitions aren't easy. Right, exactly. And, and having a place like that that kind of hits on everyone, you know, everyone's, um, you know, learning modality and uh, that, that tends to, you know, maybe ease things up a little bit. For them. Right. That's great. Well, uh, that could actually be deemed an outcome. What other outcomes from our students did you see? I, I think one of the things I've seen is just the sense of ownership. You know, that's okay. something that we really try to foster in the yeah. preschool. We want our yeah. children to be risk takers. We want them to be curious and inquisitive and know that they're in a safe environment where they can go out and they can explore. Sure. And they're, they're, you know, they take that ownership inside, but they've carried it outside too. And there's a lot of times when we're doing things, they'll say, well, let's go out in the garden and test that out. You know, let's go sure. see what's going on. And so I think that that's been exciting to see yeah. them come up with their own plans of what, what they want to learn and what they want to study and how they want to do it. And yeah. so that's and that, exactly and, what we're trying to foster, and it, it and we're achieving that. And we're trying to foster that throughout the entire school system. Mm -hmm. You know that ownership, that autonomy and learning, and and the garden helps. You know, pull that in. No pun out. intended, but cultivate that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. That's very good to hear. Anything else? You know what? I I think we're still building on that. We're yeah. we're listening to the children and seeing sure. where they are going with their ideas and their creativity and their thoughts. And we're going to start building on that. Um, right now, they're into the building, into the blocks, and into the creative. Sure. So we have it in our plan. We have all the money set aside for us to buy um, blocks and building materials. Sure. Sure. And so we'll. I think what we'll do is keep listening to the children and kind of gearing that money towards yeah. building it and making it better and just... Going, going as far as it can, right, right, right. So you try to, you know, as you're teaching the kids, you talk to them a little bit about the things that, you know, they would want mm -hmm. right. to see. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of elicit that feedback right. from, from right. the kids. I know I know. every time I walk by that space, I look at that sandbox. I was a sandbox guy <laughs> when I was little. I, I, I would have been in that sandbox every day. So I just, Some of the children are, are in the sandbox yeah. every day, and I do. It's it's hard not to sit on the edge and just kind, kind of play, play with yeah. the sand. Yeah. It is. It's it's pretty awesome. It's relaxing. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, just just one one follow up question. You know, all this being outside, it is weather dependent. Yes, it is. So sometimes, you know, being in the Midwest, the fall weather or the spring weather isn't always cooperative. So do you guys tend to just have a contingency plan then in case the weather is inclement? I know you try to go out as much as possible, but then you just kind of, if the weather's bad, you move to plan B inside? Basically. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. We've always okay. got, I, I think we tend to have more ideas than we have time for. So it, it right. tends to work out that we've always got a few things ready to go that we just haven't haven't gotten to so so it works out but we do utilize it in the winter time we have been out there when there's snow on the ground okay. and we do observe the icicles the other day the 2.9s made little bird feeders out of pine right. cones and we put them on our tree out there so unless it's like really really cold we'll we will be out there that's great um a plan of the just future our boots. we do put we have, we have some <laughs> nice boots that's right um a nice plan would just be a little hill so in the winter when it's snowing if we could have you know you guys want to comar comar had a little hill, hill. we oh, miss yeah. her yeah. on so if you hill. could work on that <laughs> well you never know someday 
Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe a sledding hill is, you know, in the future plans. But um, Karen and Sharon, I want to thank you uh, for joining us on our one, two, three podcasts, uh, for telling this amazing story, and just for making uh, such a great difference in the lives of our students. You do amazing work uh, with our little ones. So thank you very thank you. much, thank and thank you for, for being here. Us. Next time on our one, two, three podcast, we're going to tell. Yet another story of innovation here in District 123 and invite one of our art teachers, Mara Petritus, to the podcast to speak a little bit about how she integrates STEM learning into her curriculum through the use of a Lego architecture project that she uses to make learning come alive for her art students. So for our preschool dynamic duo, Karen and Sharon, our producer, Natalie, who's always got her hand on that mute button for me. <laughs> this is uh, Paul Enderly checking out. Thank you for listening to 123 from District 123. And until next time, remember, when we believe, our kids succeed.